This video is offered to introduce our subscribers to the best utilization and interpretation of our newest enhancement where we are utilizing FFO or funds firm operations in order to better uh, interpret fair valuation or relative valuation on investments such as real estate investment trusts, uh, master limited partnerships, and business development corporations. The first place we would like to draw the subscribers attention to are the changes that we've made in the navigation bar um, because this is really where these new enhancements come into play. Um, prior to adding funds from operations, which is this little tab here, we had operating earnings, basic earnings, and diluted earnings, which were three iterations that could be utilized to draw earnings and price correlated fast graphs. However, as I'll show in a moment, um, these mnemonics really don't apply as well to things like REITs, MLPs, and, and BDCs, or business development corporations. They are more focused on funds from operations, so you'll, the subscriber will notice a couple of changes that are very important. First of all, we've added now a funds from operations options, which you access by simply clicking the little dot there, and you can see we turned off the operating earnings and turned the FFO on by doing that. But I'm going to leave operating earnings on here for a moment. Uh, another addition we've made, or change that we've made, um, or both you could say, is that we've changed what used to be called the the upper or the earnings growth rate line, which was this box here where you could shut that line off, and we now call it the valuation growth rate line because it applies not just to earnings per share or EPS anymore, it also can apply to FFO. And that would be the orange line on the graph. So this unchecking this button would turn that line off for any and all charts. And then only really for REITs, MLPs, and BDCs, um, we have added what we call an income valuation line, which I'll explain later in the video. And that, that line is turned off and on by simply checking this box. As a quick summary and review of the FastGraphs Fundamental Analyzer software tool, I'm going to start out with Ross stores here. And the reason I chose this particular um, company is because this is a picture of operating earnings. You can see we have the operating button click, and we have an orange line here which represents um, the value line based on a peg ratio calculation because this is a fast growing company at over 17% per annum. And then we have the normal price earnings ratio, which ends up being very close. It's slightly less at 15.8, which simply articulates what valuation the market has historically for whatever time frame I'm running. Here we've got a 15 year chart. Um, how they've priced the stock. And there, therefore, you can use either of these two lines to kind of gauge fair valuation. You know, when the price is below either of these lines, you can, an argument is made for undervaluation. When the price is touching the line, an argument is made at fair valuation. And when the price gets above the line as it is currently, then a good argument gets to be made for, you know, fair value, I mean, for overvaluation, excuse me. However, the problem is that as well as this works, and admittedly, this is a quintessential example where you see a clear tracking of price the monthly um, closing stock price or the black line clearly tracking earnings over the long run with you know the mi minor bouts of volatility in between but when you look at this same picture using operating earnings for a REIT you'll find that these correlations really fall apart to illustrate that point let's look at a residential REIT um, BRE properties and when you look at operating earnings which you see down here now is an orange line and now with this particular company you see a clear separation and then we try to calculate the normal PE ratio and the problem is we have very little correlation here between price and earnings like we saw you know with Ross stores previously but not only that we really don't have any real method of you know how can we determine fair value utilizing this REIT and the problem is that because REITs will often have a lot of accounting adjustments, you know, depreciation and so on, because they invest in real estate, um, you know, the, you're, you're going to get a lot of accounting, uh, I, I like to call it magic, that, that really, um, you know, doesn't allow for a very clear picture, because these are primarily cash flow um, operations. So funds from operations now becomes much more relevant. And I'm going to click the, the button here, and I'm going to add, I'm going to convert this chart now from an operating earnings chart to a funds from operation charts on B. Um, um, BRE or, or BRE properties, but I'm also going to introduce the income valuation line because when, we, when I convert this chart, as you'll soon see, we're going to really add, and, and, and what we've really tried to do here is we've tried to add several valuation metrics that can be utilized for real estate investment trust to give the subscriber, you know, several opportunities to look at valuation. 
So now when we look at funds from operations, we can see a much clearer correlation of stock price to funds from operations. Um, we also see that the normal, um, it's now called the price to funds from operations ratio makes a lot more sense. So we can clearly see periods of overvaluation, periods of undervaluation, et cetera. And this pink line as way of a quick explanation simply is the income. Um, when you're looking at the dividends, what we've, you know, advise subscribers to do in the past was simply take all these lines off the chart except for the dividend area and look at the price to income relationship. This pink line represents all of the available funds for operations and as a REIT they have to pay out 90 percent of their income so th this in essence would be a hundred and I think, I think it actually calculates out to 111 percent of the dividend but it gives you another look at valuation when you're trying to evaluate REITs. Also at this point, a little further explanation of what the funds from operations column actually is. If you click on the f f help frequently asked questions, you will find here a, um, a description of funds for operations definitions. By clicking on this definition, it will take you to a precise definition of what the funds from operations um, you know, line actually how it is composed and made. But for sake of this presentation today, um, I'm not going to focus on defining that. As I'll let you go ahead and read those definitions yourself, but I do want to talk essentially what it is. Um, what we've done is we've gone into the statement of cash flows and we've calculated funds from operations. Now, a couple of words about this. Number one is a lot of firms we can have some leeway here and we'll report different funds from operations depending on what kind of accounting adjustments they are making. What FastGraphs has done is we've applied a universal formula that is pretty widely accepted and will apply in most cases for calculating funds from operations. However, what you will discover is that you know the funds from operations calculation is very, very similar or analogous to operating activities cash flows. I wouldn't call them a precise, exact proxy for that. What I would suggest is though that it's a good kissing cousin. In other words, if you run funds, if you run operating cash flows on any of these companies, you will see that they correlate very closely to the funds from operations column, although there will be some, you know, minor discrepancies because of the way that we're calculating it. But both come off of the statement of cash flows. And again, they're not maybe perfect um, twins, but what they are are kissing cousins, at least in our opinion. Next, I would t like to take a look at what I call a classic or quintessential example of, you know, valuing a REIT utilizing the funds from operations. Uh, this is C uh, Senior Housing Partners Trust, which is a specialized REIT. And what you see here is you see funds from operations are reasonably consistent. However, they do have a very low growth rate. Um, the reason why the normal price to funds from operation line, um, which, which, which would represent 13.1 times funds from operations down here, is lower is because you can see there have been several periods where the price has been below the funds from operations line. And then we have, again, the, you know, the, the income um, valuation line for REITs, which represents, you know, dividends or the, or the amount of, of cash available for dividends. And you can see all these lines coincide pretty clearly in this example. And it's also very clear to see that, you know, when you look at this company, you can tell when it's undervalued or overvalued from a relative point of view. So, I mean, it's undervalued here. It's more undervalued here. It's slightly undervalued here. It's a little overvalued here. And, of course, it's, you know, trading at approximately fair value on spots where the price is, you know, touching the lines or pretty close to them. So the idea, and I think it's important that subscribers understand this, this gives you a very good look at a company being able to determine that it's, that it's reasonably priced. Also, with a 7% dividend yield and the stock, you know, trading close to its normal PFFO um, price to, to funds from operations and, you know, slightly under its, you know, funds from operations justified value and, and slightly under its, um, you know, income valuation line. This looks like a very attractive REIT if you're looking for yield. Now, to put this into a little better perspective, we're going to take a look at another REIT here. We're going to look at East Grope Properties. And by the way, I want to bring the... Um, um, viewers' attention to this normal price to FFO ratio line. You'll notice when the FFO funds from operation, um, you know, line is checked. This will say normal price to FFO line. If I went back to operating earnings on this example of East Group Properties here and redrew the chart, looking at it from the standpoint of operating earnings, which as I've indicated is not a good method of looking at REITs, as you can see here, um, you'll notice that now says normal PE ratio line. So, you know, um, whatever price, you know, line, you know, ratio line that you have, whether it's price to earnings or price to FFO, will automatically be 
um, you know, put on the graph, and you'll see it over here too, where here it says normal PE ratio, and now it's switched to normal price to FFO ratio, so that you you know know as a user what you're looking at. But I want to give you another opportunity uh, that, in addition to looking at the dividend you know valuation line or the income valuation line, the FFO line or the normal PFFO line. I also want to point out that you can look at dividend yields historically to get another sense of valuation. Clearly. This this, this particular REIT, you know, shows it to be undervalued at the beginning of this period, which is 1231.02. So if I get out here to the performance table and look at what it looked like, you know, at 1231.2002, we see that it was yielding 7.5%. Um, and, you know, that's a, a, a good yield that that you would expect this company to have, or it's an attractive yield. However, when you see that it being slightly overvalued right now, you'll notice that it's only yielding 4%. So by checking a, you know, a attractively valued historical yield here, or you can see just by looking at the dividend yields over all these years, this company is normally yielding 7 or 8%. Um, but right now, you're, if you bought it today at this high valuation or higher than normal valuation, you're only getting a 4% yield, which would, again, be a good indication that the, um, this particular read is modestly overvalued. With my next example, I want to take a look at Federal Realty Investment Trust because I want to utilize this to kind of focus on overvaluation. You can clearly see there have been times when this REIT has been reasonably valued. And right now, you know, based on using this analysis, it's significantly above its normal price to free cash flow or to funds from operations. It's normally, it's significantly above its actual funds from operations, what I call justified valuation, and it's above its traditional income valuation also. But here's the key. One of the advantages of fast graphs, we can go back in time and hit this review button, and then what we can do is we can look at this REIT um, historically and determine, you know, what kind of impact overvaluation actually has. If you look at the period 2007 to 2009 and simply plug in that period of time, so I'm going to plug in 2007 here and then I'm going to you know plug in 2009 and what I'm going to show is the impact of overpaying for the REIT here and what it did over the next you know what kind of problems it caused over the next three years. So now I'm simply going to draw this graph and what I discover is the REIT was very overvalued and it kind of moved into fair value before kind of rising to maybe moderate overvaluation here. But look what happened. A thousand dollar investment in that REIT was start with a starting yield of only 2.8%, which was very low, but similar to what it's yielding right now. Um, you didn't get much dividend return, but here's the real kicker. You actually lost 7.3% annual compounding loss on your money, turning $1,000 into only $796. And the net result was you ended up losing a compounded loss of 4% per annum on your investment, including dividends, simply because you overpaid for now to conclude this video, I've gone back into the main screen here and I've taken a look at a regular C Corp, Procter and Gamble and Company. And you know, this is an interesting example here because when you look at it from an operating earnings point of view, um, look at the last 15 years, we see that the market had a history here of pricing this company at a premium to what I call now its earnings justified valuation line. Um, and you know, of course, you know, it, it Maybe by coincidence, it looks like the market was pricing this company more in line with its dividend uh, than it was its earnings. Although since the recession, you can see the prices come down to earnings. But keeping in mind that, you know, the FFO um, calculation, the funds from operation calculation is very analogous to operating earnings. Look what happens when we look at this company um, through the lens of, of the funds from operation instead of just looking at it from an operating earnings point of view. And here we see that it really looks like, now I can't tell anyone why it's done this, but here we clearly see that the market has historically priced this company in line with its funds from operations. So now the um, subscriber can look at, you know, classic, um, you know, what I call blue chip, you know, dividend yielding stocks and look at them also through the lens of the funds from operations. And this just simply provides you one more way of trying to determine whether or not the stocks you're looking at are fairly valued, um, undervalued, or overvalued. And I'd like to conclude this video by looking at DDR Corp, a retail REIT, to show that, you know, when by utilizing the fast graph, looking at the funds from operations 
calculation, you can clearly see here that this company has gone through some, you know, big drops in funds from operations recently. And then you can also see that the company has had, you know, some, some significant dividend cuts as a result of that. So it's another one of the advantages that the funds from operations give now. You can clearly see that cash flows here are having a problem. That would be up to the subscriber, of course, to try to determine what those problems were. But anyway, we hope this video, um, you know, gave you some insights into how we're um, um, utilizing the fast graphs you know, new um, um, ability to look at companies from the stand or REITs and, and MLPs and um, BDCs. Um, all these things apply, you know, universally to all these different kinds of investments. Um, but the idea here is that, you know, I also want to point out, just like it is with the operating earnings, you can see here that this is a very dynamic tool. In this example, funds from operations showed a loss. But if I would shorten this to like a 10-year graph, on Omega Health um, Healthcare REIT, you can see now that the funds from operations growth rate has increased. And if I drop it even to a, you know, down to a nine year and take out this last drop, you can see that, you know, for the last nine years or so, funds from operations have grown at 7.8%. You can see the effect it had on that. We hope this uh, helped clarify this and we hope you get some um, um, real advantages out of this new um, calculation for fair value that we've now added to fast graphs.